And welcome back to Subculture. Well, if you've been to any music festival in Australia over the last 30 years or so, there is a good chance that you have seen the Porkers play. And now they are heading out on the road uh, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of their Hot Dog Daiquiri album. So we thought to find out a little bit more about this great tour, we thought we would actually get Pete from the Porkers on the phone right now to chat about this tour. Welcome to Subculture, mate. And here I am. <laughs> I'm here. So, Pete, tell us a little bit about this tour. What was it that made you guys decide it was time to get out there on the road again and work your magic in front of your loyal fans? Well, actually, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, uh, probably because uh, this is the 25th anniversary uh, of the Hot Dog Daiquiri album. Um, we did a couple of shows um a few years back to the 20th anniversary and um last time we were in melbourne uh some guy walked up to me and said oh you know you did the 20th anniversary well that was five years ago and i was like you should do the 25th anniversary and i was like that's not a bad idea <laughs> so so we thought yeah we'll do more shows this time and Try and do it properly. Yeah. Do you have to pinch yourself that it's 25 years ago? I mean, I, I can remember the album coming out and, yeah, made me feel pretty old when I realised it was 25 years ago. Yeah, I, I don't know about pinch myself, maybe punch myself. <laughs> um, um, no, it, it, it's, it's crazy because, again, 1998 can't be 26, actually 26 years ago, but um, we, we, we were supposed to do the tour last year, but kind of ended up now but it's still the 25th anniversary but um yeah uh yeah <laughs> the turn of the century couldn't have been that long ago it's crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it doesn't yep. it, it doesn't feel like 24 years ago that we're all worried about some millennium bug wiping everything out for us so it's uh yeah, it's so strange when people talk about that time being 25 years ago but mate I mentioned in the intro that you guys you guys played at all of the big festivals, uh, Livid, Big Day Out, Falls. You even went overseas for, for Vans. What, what was that period like for you playing at those festivals? Because it seems like we've, we've lost those festivals now. Yeah, actually, we all of them are gone. Um, yep. I, I, that was probably our fault. That was probably our fault. <laughs> we'll, we'll take claim for that. Um, but no, um, it was great. It was a really good time. Um, you know, and again, at the time, didn't realize how good a time it was. Um, but, um, we were so busy in that period and just, um, yeah, crazy time, great crowds, just on and on and on. Yeah, it was great. So you, you were one of those Aussie bands that kind of broke out into the US market as well. We mentioned that you went across to, to Vans and, um, you also... Did some shows with the Mighty Mighty Boston's as well. What was that like heading across to America as an Australian band at that time? Um, it was it was really good because um, it was something that I, I'd, I'd been uh, I'd been dreaming of for a while, and I, I knew there was a there was a great sort of um, ska and ska punk scene there. Um, I'd been there a few times in the early nineties, and um, just wanted to get back and play to those crowds. So. Um, when we finally did, it was just like, yes. So, um, I wish we could have got back there sooner and capitalized on it more, but it wasn't to be at the time. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really interested to hear about that. What was the ska punk scene like in America at that time? Because of course you guys kind of revolutionized it here in Australia alongside bands like area seven. But what was that like over in America at, at that time? Because I know the Mighty Mighty Boston's got a huge boost from um, the movie Chasing Amy. Um, what was the ska punk scene like in America at that time? Yeah, I'll, I'll correct you there. It was Clueless, the movie. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. I know it's in Chasing yeah. Amy as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Sorry, there you go. Yeah. Um, they, they were actually in the movie Clueless. They, they were the band at the, the, the dance. Yeah. So, um... Um, yeah, so we went in 99, and that was about the time where the whole Scar thing imploded. Um, so even though we still got a really, really good response, 
I still remember somebody um, working on the Vans Warp Tour that said, oh, you should have been here last year. Scar's dead now. So um, it, it was a little bit of a, oh. But, um, yeah, we still played to great, great crowds and everything. So um, it, it, it wasn't on the way out as far, as far as we were concerned. But um, 99 is seen as the, the year that Scar died. Yeah, you you got to yep. kick you got to kick off your thirtieth year in in New York as well. Um, what was that experience like going back to America after all of those years? That that, that was really really good. Um, we got uh, invited to to Boston to play the Mighty Mighty Boston's um, uh, annual end of year. Um, hometown throwdown so um, that was absolutely huge for us and then um, uh, got to do a whole uh, a few other shows on the east coast and then we went to the west coast and did a, did a full tour with uh, the Voodoo Glow Skulls and Buck 09 so that was great um, and it was really good to get back to well, fans that well, let me think. New fans that never thought they would get to see us play were excited, and then there were old fans that never ever thought we were coming back. Um, yep. So, you know, and it was great to turn up, and there was a few T-shirts in the crowd from the '99 tour, um, and I still remember um, there was a couple of guys that came to one of the shows, which was quite a small show. It was um, in Reno on a Tuesday night, and um, they'd driven six hours to see us because that was the only show that they could all make together. But they were all just like, oh, my God, we never, ever thought we'd get to see you again. We saw you in 99, and we, we drove six hours tonight to see you. So wow. um, things like that <laughs> um, really make it worthwhile, yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you thinking about taking this tour over to the US as well? Because 25 years for an album is a pretty big milestone. Yeah, we, we'd like to. Um, we've got feelers out. Um, nothing's biting yet, so we'll just, we'll just have to see. So, um, we, as said, after we were there in 2017, we really wanted to get back sooner than last time, so... Um, working on a few things there, but um, you never know. But nothing, nothing as yet. Definitely. Now, if people are heading along to this tour, what can you tell us about the set list? Because, of course, you guys are still making some great music. Um, we've been playing Calm Down Karen on the show. Tell us a little bit about um, nice. what we can expect from this set list. Um, well, it's the Hot Dog Daiquiri 25th Anniversary Tour, and we're basically playing hot dog daiquiri in completion yep um um and then maybe they'll get a calm down Karen if they they cheer it cheer enough at the end and maybe a, a couple of other classics so yeah the, yeah the thing I want about all they get yeah <laughs> yeah well, I wanted to chat to you, too, about something else that you've launched recently as well, your Cinnamon Whiskey. Tell us a little bit about the journey into the, the whiskey scene and how that's come about. Oh, well, we, we toil away in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the factory making the whiskey ourselves and... Oh, I was going to come up with a good story then, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that. I don't know how whiskey's made. I was about I was about to say something about squashing the grapes ourselves, but it was like that's not right. <laughs> um, uh, um, we just hooked up with um, this manufacturer that uh, does limited runs, and um, we felt it was time. We we we, we felt that after um, now here's the big one: thirty-seven years of this band, and the amount of songs that we've written about alcohol. And having a good time, it, it it seemed to be part of our journey to have our own cinnamon whiskey. <laughs> so we just made it happen. Yeah. What made you settle on cinnamon whiskey? Was there something out like that? Is that something that you enjoy, or what was it that made you settle on that? Out of all the alcohols that you could have gone for. Yeah, I, I. I I do like the cinnamon whiskey myself, personally. Yep. So um, it was like, yeah, that's going to be cool. 
Um, we had a choice of a couple of other things. There was vodka and gin. Um, and um, uh, it, it just it just seemed like, like the favourite one to, to go for. Um, uh, I, th- I, th- I think vodka would just would have would just would have been would have been too cheap and too below us. You know, yep. we're a whiskey bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I should let our listeners know if you do want to grab some of the porkers cinnamon whiskey, you can grab that from groglords.com backslash the porkers. So make sure you grab yourself a bottle of that because it is limited to just one hundred bottles. But uh, Pete. I guess to wrap up, what would you like to say to people out there who are thinking about heading along um, to these shows? There's still plenty of shows left. So what would you like to say to our listeners out there who are thinking about heading along to these shows? Yes, I was going to say, um, the, the, with the whiskey, there's, there's only, a, only a handful left because we bought a heap of them ourselves. Yeah. So, because that's the we are. Anyway, but the shows, the shows... Um, well, so far we've we've already done Queensland last weekend, and as you can tell by my voice today, I'm a little bit shabby. Um, they were quite hectic shows, and um, we're looking forward to uh, just continuing the mayhem. So, um, if you just want to come along, it's um, it's going to be a good time. Um, I don't I don't promise to uh, bring my normal virtuoso voice to the to the shows, but it will it will have the effort that's what we'll have <laughs> <That's>... <laughs>